Hey everyone, and welcome back to Don't Open That Door. I'm Justin, and I'm the detective trying to figure out what the hell exactly is going on here. I'm Nico, and I couldn't actually find this movie, so I watched the first half of The Parent Trap and the second half of The Evil Dead, and uh, boy howdy, what a what a switch that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Well, I'm Dan, the older brother? You could be the womb brother. Oh. That's a sentence I just said. Yeah. Well, here's another one. We <laughs> unite today to review Evil Dead Trap. So this was directed by Toshiharu Ikeda, starring Miyuki Ono as Nami, Hitomi Kobayashi as Rei. Some of you might know her from other things. Yuji Hanma as Daisuke. It's porn. You might know her from porn. Why you have to say it like that, bro? <laughs> Mari Shimizu as the voice of Hideki. Also, that'd be some classic porn these people would be watching. She was big in the Hey, 80s. man, we got a wide array of ages in our listening yeah. audience. Shout right, out to back my the... geriatric scholars over here. Jesus Christ. Geriatric. Yeah, he's out he's not there, not too. He's out there, too. He's a listener. Shout out to you, Jay, man. All right. And Hi, Masahiko Jerry. Abe as Kondo. So we open with Nami, a lady who hosts a late night TV show that basically shows like home videos from like VHS tapes from viewers and whatnot. Well, one day she gets a legit snuff film sent to her, and shockingly, it seems pretty genuine. So, in light of her show's falling ratings, she decides to get together a crew of her friends from the show. They're going to bring some cameras and whatnot and try and do some spooky investigating, and they head to the location from the video. So, it turns out the location in the video is actually an abandoned base of some kind, filled with like dimly lit tunnels and hallways. Nami runs into a mysterious man who says that he's looking for someone, but he warns that the base is not a playground. Unfortunately, Nami and her crew don't really leave, and so they're killed off one by one until only Nami's left. Nico, what a bummer. Yeah, sure is. And traumatized by the death of her friends at this point, Nami runs back into the mysterious man, and together, they proceed through the base. He leads Nami to the exit, and then he gives her a gun in a moment where he seems like he was actually a real one, telling her to flee. She has a golden opportunity to leave, but instead tries to re-enter the base because reasons. Upon re-entry, though, she makes a terrifying discovery. Turns out the mysterious man has actually been killing her friends all along, shock and awe. It turns out the person that he is looking for is his little brother, Hideki. But Hideki's not actually missing. Hideki is a demon psychic mutant baby that actually lives inside of him he's inside inside me, me. <laughs> so dan well, a perfect place for you to come on dan what what happens next well, <laughs> hideki emerges from the mysterious man and tries to kill nami but she manages to survive long enough for the man to stuff hideki back inside of him <laughs> quite literally <laughs> He then stabs himself, and thus stabbing Hideki, seemingly burns to death, but then gets back up, gets stabbed again, and finally falls out of a window and is smashed to pieces. And that scene very much reminded me of some, like, Friday the 13th kind of shit. Yeah, it did. Anyways, yeah. Later, Nami awakens in a hospital, but she is told that they weren't able to find anything matching her description of Hideki. Later on, Nami presents her crew's investigation on her TV show, and everyone applauds. Unfortunately, Hideki is actually inside of her now, and she gives birth to him as the movie comes to a bloody end. And Hideki whispers, or cries, Mommy! Mommy! The end. Well, we got some stuff to cover here. <laughs> the fucking so, movie. Let's just go ahead and start with how it looks. Nico, how does this one look to you? It looks very jarring in kind of a good way, kind of a bad way. I think the first half of this movie was edited like an extended anime outro almost. Like there were a lot of cuts that were going on like rapid fire between scenes that didn't have the most strict continuity between them there was a pretty consistent just soundtrack of 
80s synthy bangers that uh, goes around the world just la 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 like that song is playing basically the whole fucking movie you know that, that fucking vibe, song that's okay I oh i know that, that song but yeah. all right it's got, the got, exact got... same melody uh, hey. i don't know about that okay okay well dan since nico wanted to say how it sounded how's it look uh i agree with nico that it looks very jarring uh it's kind of dirty and grimy looking too Damn. um partially because it's an older film and maybe not the best top of the line at the time anyways but i mean i think it looks okay i did not really like the mysterious man's costume when he was like all dressed up in his like cloak and like face mask he had massive paul dano as the riddler energy yeah and man, it, it looked like he was gonna be weird. the crow but hey. the uh hideki looked kind of creepy so that was that was kind of cool i guess yeah he no i thought creepy at times he looked mad goofy at other parts of yeah, his well, like well, metamorphosis that's, that's very true yeah, 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 I'd have to agree with that. One thing I really, in terms of the looks, I think perhaps the best thing graphically in this movie is at the very start where there's the snuff film. They really take their time on the snuff film with this dude yeah. like cutting up this chick and like the a knife goes into her eyeball and everything else like that. So it's fucking it is, grotesque. It's it like is fucking hard to watch at points. It's nuts. It, it really is nuts. So I was over here just like, yo. They also have a number of scenes where they use like inverse, you know, blues and blacks, or like mm. white, white, black inverse or whatever that's called. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they do it in the snuff film when the girl's getting her eye like pierced. Mm -hmm. They do it, I think, right at the end, maybe once or twice throughout the movie as well. And there's this scene where one of the crew is a, part of a photographer, so she's going around taking pictures. So they use the flash to light up the, the area. And of course, when she gets massive killed, fucking epilepsy flash yes. warning for this, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, yep. there's one point in time where they're like, let's just, they, they just put that in there right there. It's like yep. fucking Sandstorm by Darude, or however you say that dude's name. Darude? Sandstorm? How, how do you fucking say it? How do you say it, Justin? I, I can't even tell you, bro. It's not me. It's not me. I can't be the one. I can't be the one to tell you. So I'm the problem here. Okay. All right. Bro, any any more musical acts you want to throw in there, bro? You need some, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, what, what Lennox, bro? What this movie remind you of? What other songs? I mean, that, that was pretty much it, actually. Yeah, so in terms of sounds, I think, you know, there's like, a couple songs in there that definitely remind me of like Total Eclipse of the Heart. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's definitely parts Justin said sarcastically, <laughs> but no. So, um, no, there were some like cadences that were kind of similar to some moments in that, like unironically. Word. But also, also, the there's like this recurring theme that Nico had mentioned earlier, and just like it just pops up all the fucking time. I actually would have probably preferred for them to like lay off it a little bit like and it's probably because like you know like whenever in like a Halloween movie like you know like Michael Myers theme always kicks in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like I, I can only say it's like rule of cool because it was cool when they did it in that one and for me in this one the sound it, it, it happened too many times like <laughs> it's a it, fucking lie. Yeah. Like because that would happen just when Michael was there but like this is like the two characters just fucked guess what afterwards we're going to play this what why I, I don't know like it, it was weird it was weird at times but outside of that you know obviously i'm not a japanese speaker so i can't really comment on you know like how well the they spoke japanese <laughs> <laughs> i mean you can totally comment on the sound of the dialogue okay yeah i can comment. i don't know quality. if like someone's like slurring their words or anything like that bro says when do we talk about oh yeah this character slurred their words <laughs> Hey, bro. They could capture the English language very well. Listen, they, they I'm always, I'm always, I'm always, arc. I'm always concerned with diction. All right, need to relax. Yeah. I don't know about that. I am. With Trust diction, me. Huh? All right. Bonus episode coming soon on diction. So, all that. What the fuck, Dan? <laughs> 
You're the one Dan over said here it. trying to sidetrack me. What the fuck? You're the Dan's the Hideki it. of the group. Dan's literally oh, the no. Hideki don't, of the don't, group. Don't say that. Dan, Dan's in the Why cut. Am I the Hideki, Whose bro? chest is he bursting <laughs> out of? Mine or yours? No, no, listen, listen. listen. He's not. He's listen. Who's giving Dan, birth to me? <laughs> <laughs> I even think about. <laughs> How can you not? What just happened to this podcast? Not... <laughs> We're bringing it back. Anything else, Dan, you want to add about the sound? I can't even believe we can get past the technical details before this shit happened. <laughs> this soundtrack kind of bumps, and it's not very horror to me. No. And pretty much any time any music started playing, I was like, yeah, this is great. And it sounded yeah. like I was like about to fight a boss in like some SNES like RPG or some shit. Yeah, and like, fair comparison. And I was just like, this doesn't inspire fear in me or anything like that. I'm, I'm just ready to go. I was like, let's do this. But it was a cool soundtrack. You know, what's funny. There's actually a couple examples of 80s horror in particular where shit like that happens. Where, like, the music doesn't quite line up with, ooh, ah, yeah. spooky. But I now want to ask, what kind of horror is this, right? But I want to frame this in-depth analysis and discussion with, I've seen online that People have referred to this as a Giallo movie. That's really interesting. I get it, kind of. Well, do you, I was going to ask, do you agree with that at all? Or would you... I mean, obviously, you can be Giallo and other things as well. Do you see it in the light of being a Giallo movie? Or Giallo? I don't know how you say it. Giallo, you got it, yeah. I think there's an argument to be made there for certain. I think there's a lot of elements that they share, particularly in the aesthetic and the presentation of a lot of the colors and just the way they frame some of the, the shots in particular, the ones that are of characters who are having some kind of misery inflicted upon them. I was sitting here thinking like, oh, this is kind of like the uh, room full of barbed wire a couple times when watching that, just thinking about that I scene. I forgot about in... that scene, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's merit to it. And for anyone unfamiliar with the term, Giallo is referring to a sort of subgenre of horror films originating in the, I believe, the 70s with a lot of Italian artists and a lot of um, just sort of people in that sort of part of the industry at the time. Yeah, definitely. And they were like movies kind of based on those paperbacks, really pulpy paperbacks. That's where the name came from, the mm -hmm. yellowed pages, so to speak. Not like the yellow pages here in America, the totally different, totally different meaning for sure. Oh my God, phone books! <laughs> phone books! But, you know, I think personally... I could see that one thing about this movie that really stood out to me was the lighting, how like yeah. some of the different yeah. scenes were lit. I remember in Suspiria, when we reviewed that movie, we talked a lot about the lighting there and that's obviously an Italian joint. And I feel like this one kind of at times had shades of that. Like in particular, there was a blue lighting that lit kind of like a lot of the time and, you know, kind of Suspiria had the same shit. So it was cool to see that super in your face. I think that this is, you know, I didn't think about it before, but like looking up kind of what the elements of a Gallo movie are, you know, the mystery, the horror, oftentimes the slasher, eroticism as well. Like there's a lot like this does have all that. So that's yeah, there's a whole there. ass sex scene that goes on for longer than you would expect. Once. All right. So real two, quick, real quick. Two. I was going to say it, but I'm going to say it now. So I did not know that Hitomi Kobayashi had any association with any kind of adult videos. And I just noted to myself that that sex scene was like particularly well acted. Like I was like, yo, this is like professional. Like you don't, you don't see this this well. Like normally it's like in like, you know, like a, in a, I don't want to say Hollywood cause it's not a Hollywood movie, but like in a mainstream, you know, film or something like that. Like you only get like the standard, you know, like, or whatever like that, but nah, bro, she was, she she was she was really like, yo. They they hit like three positions, bro, in like five minutes, and was I was out here like it was definitely an extended cut, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I was out here like, yo, like, she, her like her 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 body was on point, like everything I was like, yo, something seemed wrong here, and and or, or right to more so to the point, 
And then lo and behold, look what happened. Look what happened. Look where she came from. The the adult video industry, son. So there You're you right. go. Shit. There you go. Give so all that to say, to sex workers. what kind of horror is this? It's a sexy horror. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, <laughs> definitely not. So, no. I mean, this is like a, you know, I, I think it's got elements of body horror as well, for sure. Yeah. With the, especially with the stuff at the beginning and everything else. Dan, any more elements you got? No, I mean, I think you guys got it. I, I was going to say the Yalo kind of stuff and that. That, that, like you mentioned, Justin, it also encompasses slasher a little bit because this definitely has has those kind of influences, right? And and body horror at the beginning and end, I think too. So oh, for yeah. sure. Oh well, as you know, as you're over here, I want you to continue your piece here. So Hideki, I want to talk about Hideki. I know you know about Hideki. So was Hideki like? Did he have the pyrokinesis like like Gil from Street Fighter Third Strike? Like I I, I want to know what what was Hideki to you? What well, do you sum no up about Hideki? Fucking idea. No bro, fucking idea. <laughs> what'd you think? You have I, to think I, something. I can't, I can't think, bro. This dude <laughs> has to have some sort of psychic powers because <laughs> there's a couple scenes up. where he's shooting like fucking fireworks at her <laughs> in that one room. Uh, like actual and fucking like, Roman and candles crossbow and bolts. Shit. Nobody else yeah. had a crossbow, right? Yeah. So he was just like shooting crossbow bolts. Um, and like, okay, also, how the fuck does he fit inside of, of Dice That Day, bro? was my question. Bro, like, okay, so I he guess that he like... his guts, Uwu. <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ. But he wasn't in his guts. I could accept that. Yeah. He, he was, was like in his, like, in his fucking like peck. <laughs> like, so Hideki comes out of his of his peck, and then peck. My favorite part is when he like shoves him back in, and I'm like, okay, nah. I could I could see him <laughs> that was like your favorite coming part out. Of the movie. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. My favorite part of the exchange, I guess. That's fair. But I'm fucking with you. I understand Hideki coming out and then growing, right? But like, mm-hmm. bro, this is just like a big ass baby thing that you're like shoving back in, in under your nipple, like. What? I would imagine Hideki like probably like is maybe like two to three feet. Like they said, thirty centimeters. No, that's a fucking lie. Hey, that's what how how big is thirty cm? Said. How big that's is thirty like cm? A ruler. Yeah, it's like. Ain't it? What? 2. That's a foot. Two? That's a yeah. foot. That's a foot. So yeah. You could totally fucking curb stomp the shit out of this thing. Just kick it. Yeah, literally. Thank Bro, you. Also, like Hideki can use like grappling attacks too. He it's like a fucking grapples, Metroid. He like grappled shit. her with it with with. I'm assuming that oh, was yeah. supposed to be like an, an umbilical cord or something. Yeah. But like Hideki's like a thing. Hideki is like as old as dude. He just like never got yeah. past like mutant baby stage. Stage. Like, doesn't so, he also like, like take over? Dude, maybe he's like right. the twin that they absorbed in the womb or some shit. All right. When did Stephen King's The Dark Half come out? Because we got some <laughs> fucking. <laughs> this probably came first, I'm going to say. Probably not by much. 19... Wow, only a year. No, wait. Nah, this came out in 88, yeah. and then it came out in 89, The Dark Half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow. So okay. Real close. Wow. Stephen King, you got some explaining to do. Some explaining to do. I see you. I mean, not at all, but I mean, listen, like <laughs> literally none. I want to know, you bring up a good point. Does Hideki take over the mysterious man who may or may not be Daisuke? I mean, <laughs> if not, then what the fuck was that sudden like burst of vitality? There is like, I gotcha, bitch. And he like karate jumps himself up there and starts a whole ass other fight. No, listen. I want to know because he's like, oh, probably wondering. You know, he goes, what are you doing here? I told you to go. Very calmly going about his day. Yeah, so in case you're wondering, yeah, I am looking for Hideki. But Hideki's right here. And Hideki talks to him. He's like, oh, Nichan, like, you, 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 you fucked up. You're too soft. I kill much better than you. It's not quite what he says, but. All he right. did tell me he's it's too close soft. close enough. And he's over there like, all right, bet, bitch. And I, I feel like. Because some people online I've read that say Daisuke is like totally innocent. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on. No, I think think that's a fucking lie, bro. I think that's a fucking lie, too. Yeah. I think there may be like times that he doesn't know. Because I think when he was saying, I'm looking for my brother. I feel like he was honest in that. 
like maybe he doesn't like fully know or whatever, but Mm -hmm. there's definitely times when he for sure knows. I mean, he literally says, Hideki, you had me kill five people already. Isn't this enough? Yeah. So like he clearly knows at least some. So, and this is my question. How much of this do you think is up to the translation we're reading? Because some of these sentences, depending on how you read them, could probably mean something completely different. That's a good point. Where he's like, where the guy's like, Hideki, you had me kill five people. What if that sentence got translated as, Hideki, you already killed five people with my body. Isn't that enough? Like, Mm. because there's like different ways and phrasing that you could do. Because I could see if Daisuke never knew. Because to your point, there is that point where Daisuke tells her, he clearly is like, run away, kill me now, Mm, do something. I don't want this anymore. But then he pops up and starts fighting her, to Nico's point. Yeah. So I'm like, whoa, that's not what Daisuke wanted. So who's doing that? The Must pacing in the ladder, the final act was just fucking wild. It was wild. And also, like, I don't really want to talk about it, but I feel like I got to talk about it. Like, how in, in, the, in the fuck did Hideki get inside of her? Well, see, my theory, my working theory is that Hideki is not real. And that Hideki is some sort of, like, representation of like i don't know trauma or some shit that like i mean i can't really explain the whole like random ass explosions and shit but like (laughs) that aside i mean you could say that maybe something happened to daisuke when he was young and now he has this trauma and he's he's just a little crazy and multiple personalities or something now a little crazy guy and he kills people, and now at the end, at her Nami going through all this traumatic experience, now she's experiencing that too. And while it may not actually be Hideki itself, but maybe that's just how she's visualizing it or whatever. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well done, Dan. That was a surprisingly well thought out and cogent thesis. I need a flow Hideki- chart. May may no longer exist. I will say I replayed the one scene like five times, right? So like Nami's talking to the mysterious dude who may or may not be Daisuke. And all of a sudden someone just fucking explodes. And I was like, yo, no, 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 no. I must have missed yeah. it. No, it just fucking explosion. And I was like, yo, what caused this to happen? There's also multiple points in the movie during which there will be a scene where either there's an explosion or someone gets shot. And it's the absolute goofiest fucking blocking you've ever seen in your entire life. Like there was one time when Daisuke gets shot or like stabbed or something and he like somersaults over to his side and then jumps out of a window. (laughs) Oh, I think that was the very, very end, I think. Yeah, and there was another time when someone just got shot by a crossbow bolt and they, like, bunny hopped away to the left instead of, like, falling back. Yo, (laughs) I like... fucking goofy. I like the fucking saw trap that, I guess, Hideki or the Mysterious Band set because, like, it was to fuck with you, too. Because they had, like, a crossbow tied to a door. So when Nami opened it to save her friend, I think it might have been Mako... When she opened the door to save her friend, like the crossbow shot and Mako thought that was going to kill her. But no, the crossbow actually shoots to the side. And I guess Nami, I don't know, she wasn't looking where she was walking. And she tripped the tripwire on the floor that caused like a cutlass to come and like chop Mako in the head. Yeah, she couldn't have saw it Uh coming. (laughs) So I also forgot to say this during the, uh, the audio part of it. But some of the sound effects were pretty fucking funny, too. So, like, there was... I think the first time we see somebody get killed, aside from the snuff film, was... I can't remember... Was it Rie? Or, I can't remember who. But she gets, like, stabbed up by, like, a oh, bunch of, Oh, by all, like, like these shit, stakes coming out of... The, how the fuck did they do Where that? Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> what did happen there? Know. Like, stakes were coming down and up and all this other shit? I don't know. I can't explain that. But that shit <laughs> I thought it was sounded a ghost. like it sounded like one of the old, like older, like Gundam Wing or some shit. You know when like they're like yeah. the, the mechs are fighting here, twang, 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 twang. Like those were those sound effects. Oh, the beams. Through. Oh, yeah. yeah. That shit was funny. Did ask though, where did those fucking poles come from? Because there's something I don't you know. said knows? about okay. like moving around the house, skulking around and stabbing motherfuckers. But this was some anime shit that just happened mm-hmm. here. 
yeah, I don't, I don't fucking know, bro. I thought that someone here had psychic powers or something else from the jump because when I saw that shit happen, I was like, yo, mob psycho, like what happened, bro? Like since when did mob turn evil? Like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Can we also talk about the random, like, I don't even quite want to say side plot, but like, I guess they capture people and yeah. torture them. Yeah. And then the one dude like escapes or like almost escape the the girl is escaping in the van and then the dude like jumps her and is like oh they told me that they would free me if if i kill the trespassers or you could just fucking drive out with with her like you're in the van you already you could just fucking leave you could just leave yeah like, i thought there was going to be some sort of like bomb or something attached to him that if he got too far it would explode or some shit but no he he could have just left well, first off, that's fucking true. And a wild part of the movie, nevertheless. But I want to know, are there any... Dan pointed out one possible theme with, like, perhaps mental illness. Are there any other themes in this movie that you might see, Nico, for example? I have one. Potentially one. <laughs> Go for it. Working real hard for your fucking job? Because <laughs> why would Nami go back into that hellhole? All the shite you've just seen. I got no fucking idea. Was it journalistic pride? I don't know. Why else would you go? Dude, why would Literally, you go in the first place? Yeah, well, that was the other part, I mean, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's like, huh, I literally just got a snuff film. I'm going to go What's... investigate this shit. And I was like, you know yeah. who you should bring on your investigation? The cops. Fucking a Keisatsu, bro. That's who you need to fucking bring, bro. <laughs> because otherwise, I don't know what's going on, but this is not working out. Like, you needed to bring, like, I don't know, fucking City Hunter, another 80s anime reference for you. But I mean, you needed to bring fucking somebody. You and preferably a Cyber lot of City guns. Oedo. Yo, the dudes from Cyber City Oedo would have fucking solved they that shit. Uh, in a heartbeat, they would have solved that shit. Absolutely solved that. Because. It. That dude was was on some nutso shit, and they probably should have brought back up, which, spoiler alert, could possibly be the what would you do. Mm. So, that's fair. I don't know why she went back, but she did, and she kind of deserved it. I, I feel like yeah. at that point in time, you went back, like, you, you asked for your death right there. You fucked up. Yeah. yeah. You fucked up. What's your favorite scene in this movie, though? <sighs> probably one of the scenes that I just described with the, like, Acme cartoon level wackiness from the just like the scenes of violence where people just like go nuts that's fair dan how about you i don't know i'm gonna say this is a curveball i'm gonna say like the last like 15 minutes or so when hideki is out and about and just like wrecking shit or trying to wreck shit anyways <laughs> um I didn't, it, I don't know how to explain it. I didn't love it, but I applaud its creativity and its weirdness. So for that, I'm, I'm going to say that's my favorite sequence. So honorable mentions to uh, Kobayashi-san aside, I think that my favorite scene in the movie was probably the very beginning, the snuff film. Because that shit was just so raw yeah. that I was like, yo, like, hey, who, 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 who recommend this movie? And why they recommend me a snuff film, bro? And then, and then ten minutes later, I was like, why they recommend me a porno, bro? And then, like, I don't know. And then, like, at the end of the movie, I was like, yo, Dan, I don't know what you got to work out, bro. But why'd you recommend this movie, bro? That wasn't so, me though. Justin I, I recommended himself to watch a snuff film, bro. And himself nah. to watch a porno. Well, speaking of, what would you do? Um, I want to ask you guys a question. And I thought long and hard about this, and I know the answer Nico's already going to say, but if you were fighting uh, the mysterious man Hideki duo, what would you do? Go ahead, Nico. I know what you want to say. Grab a mushroom, one up, and stomp this motherfucker out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. What if Hideki, like, hit you with the cord, bro? The umbilical cord whip. They had so much time to do it, too. Like, that little fucker was just sitting there like a jelly bean for a solid, like, three minutes. Yo, can he fly? Did he, like, fly or teleport or some shit? He did. Yeah, he did. You're I right. that he's got <laughs> Spider-Man umbilical cord powers. Oh, I forgot he like blew a hole into a door. 
Yeah, dude, he oh. fucking brain blasted that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Hideki's out here like, ha ha, now roll 1d10 psychic damage, you Yo, fools. Got an Eldritch Blast. How did Hideki lose? <laughs> did he lose <laughs> or did he win? Oh, well, I guess a good question. Uh, like, yeah. I don't know. He like self propagated or some shit. This is a weird fucking movie. I don't, I don't even know, know how he tell. went inside of Nami though. Back to the Literally point: if Hideki no is idea. real, there's no way you'd notice that. You'd fucking notice that. Uh, she noticed at the end there. Well, yeah, at the end. Also, I like the way the news thing was full of people, and then completely empty. Yeah. It, in time for seconds. for that shit to happen. Dan, what did you do to Hideki? How was you trying to survive Hideki? I would have shot him. With the gun? When, yeah, when Daisuke was like, shoot me, she kind of like sort of accidentally shoots him. And then he's like, finish me. And then his bullet wound starts like smoking and his chest starts like cracking open. I would have been like, all right, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to shoot you now. Yeah, fuck this. Yeah. So, see, I would have taken it even a step further than that. At the beginning piece, when he was like, if you're serious about shooting me, you should shoot me. Now. All right. Bam, like you killed my friends, bro. <laughs> With a yeah. silent, cold resilience. Like you literally killed all my friends. Like, I'm, I'm going to have to kill you now. Yeah. But also, when he was like, like Dan said, when he's like, you got to shoot me quickly. I'd be, yep. No convincing here. She's like, well, mm -hmm. go to the police. Fuck that. Fuck Too that. Too late. Yeah. late for that. You saw your fucking friend, her body, her corpse was hung up and flew through the fucking air. Kondo san had his fucking head chopped off. Yeah. Bruh, what the fuck is going on here? No. No mas. And then at the end, I'm sorry to say, it was mad disrespect. She used them all for like TV publicity. She's like, yep, and this is my crew. And they all died. The end. I mean, would you not if you were a reporter? But everyone was happy. They were like, oh, yes, yeah, good yeah, job, yeah, good job. Yeah, great job, yes. Like, I feel like everyone would be sad as fuck. <laughs> Yo, you know what I just thought about? What's that? What if at the end, Nami gets in the truck van thing and she's drive away slowly, very reminiscent of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh my gosh. Shut up. <laughs> and fucking Hideki is just standing there doing like a little, little dance. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Incredible. All right. So, you know, for the critic review, first off, I want you guys to give me a, a solid guess, as you always do. What did the critics rate this one on Rotten Tomatoes? This is the most mystifying score I've ever seen. I'm going to say even, even 50. Yeah, I'm going to say a... Uh, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say a 60. I'm going to say a 60. I'm going to say a 60. Uh, Nico wins because this movie is at a perfect 100% in Rotten Tomatoes per from Chris. What? <laughs> perfect? <laughs> Come again? The movie sitting at a hundred percent. Great, tell what? How would how, the, this okay. is this is this is better than Alien? This is better than how many reviews or how many like, people <laughs> that's, did? That's that that that's <laughs> the <laughs> trick. What? That's the trick. It's five people. Five people. Yeah. Oh, okay. The All audience right. score of over two thousand five hundred ratings puts okay. This thank at a 40, fucking Christ. Puts, puts this at a forty nine. <laughs> Okay. That makes me feel better. Okay. Ugh. Man. Hundred. Ugh. <sighs> Need to take a shower. Like, I, so, could, I could see, hey, even if I don't like it, other people do. Fair enough. Fine. But like, a hundred? <laughs> Are we sure? And again, this is like an aggregator based on whether or not I just five people said it was fresh. Five people yeah. said it was fresh. So I don't know. But anyways, what's your score for this one? I still kind of don't really know, to be honest. Why <laughs> you said that? Um, I overall, I didn't particularly enjoy this movie. I kind of agree with what Nico's going to say is that there's definitely a lot of goofy parts that are unintentionally goofy. But like I kind of mentioned before, I give it props for a little bit of creativity and being a little different. I, I think that's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to give it a 45. I, I will say I, I actually kind of enjoyed the last half hour. 
when all the crazy shit's going on, when you think about it, it kind of doesn't really make any sense as we kind of trolled the movie about it already. Yeah. But I find found myself enjoying the last half hour more than the first hour. So, yeah. But 45 for me. All right. All right. All right. Nico, where you at this one? I am feeling something similar. Like Dan said, I'm, I'm going to give this a 50. This is... <sighs> This is something that, like, I had more fun doing this podcast than I had watching the movie. Yeah, true. And it's fun to talk about movies like this, but in the moment, everything excepting the, like, last 30, 45 minutes or so, it's it's kind of just, like, difficult to follow at times. And at other times just kind of off but there were moments where this made me smile and grin ear to ear i will say this movie has some of the most unintentionally fucking butt gusting laughing worthy death scenes i've seen in a minute so i'm a little more generous with my score than y'all um i'm gonna give this one a 60 and my rationale is it is different. Like yeah. it, it is creative. It is different. I can't really rate it higher than that because there are some serious issues in regards to pacing. And yeah. like, if you think about it, so this movie is already like what? It's like an hour 40 ish, give or take. And we've literally got 10 minutes set up for the setup and execution of a sex scene that is meaningless. Like, yeah. why? Like, there's a whole conversation between these two characters about how, like, he apologizes that he couldn't get it up because he drank too much one night. And then he's like, but I could do it right now. And then, well, there they go. They're just going at it. And then afterwards, it's like, oh, man, we got to, like, clean up our clothes now. And then he just ghosts. He smashes and dashes, bro. She dies alone because he's gone. Like, he's back at the van. Like, I'm ready to bounce. I did what I had to do. So, like, I don't know, man. I don't really know. I can't rate it any higher than that. Is this going to get a recommend from the pod? I don't think so. Mostly because I think that there are other movies in a somewhat similar vein. And meaning like kind of weird shit. Like if you're in the mood for some weird shit, I feel yeah. like there's other movies I'd recommend over this one. Very true. I agree with you. And it's a no for me as well. Nico? Yeah, I'm also going to say a no for me as well. In particular, if you're looking for some weird J horror, go check out Juon. Like, go get a classic under your belt. This one's. I would say bit, even. You know. I would say even Spiral. If you're yeah, looking for something really that, weird. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Uzumaki for those of you who don't want to use the uh, tainted English words, but I mean. Well, Justin, you, know, you don't speak Japanese, so you know. I don't. I don't. But. Uh, but you can appreciate the language. I can, I can, I can, in fact. I'm studying so hard. One day I will learn the three alphabets. But all that to say, also, real quick, side note, we didn't talk about this, but they definitely knew what the fuck they were doing with the name in English. Evil Dead Trap. How many people did they trap into thinking this was Evil Dead? Or Evil Dead related? Yeah. They knew exactly what they were doing. But anyways, it's, it's, a, it's a no from the pod, so we're going to give this one a pass. No golden seal, no nothing like that. But... If you disagree with us or you want to voice your opinion on the movie, you can hit us up. We're on social media. So we're on Twitter at DOTD Horror, same for Instagram. And we're on Facebook. That's Don't Open That Door. But till then, take care of one another. Keep each other safe. And as always, dear listener, don't open that door. Bye. <laughs>